Why is he saying cool, right? You know what I mean? So ragweed has a it's a plant of historical significance. So if you're allergic, you probably don't want to mess with it. So ragweed was actually one of the earliest cultivated foods in North America. And so the ragweed, it grows everywhere. It can grow in all sorts of different soil conditions. And it produces lots and lots and lots of seeds. So if you have a chance, I also recommend, after everyone's seen it, I up a leaf and smell it. It was the scientific name of the So let's talk about this. So it produces lots and lots of seeds. The cool thing about the ragweed seeds is the ragweed seeds are filled with oil. Oil is calories. Calories are what? Archaeologists, paleontologists, when they're studying ancient cultures, one of the things they really like to do is look at what's called the kitchen middens. They're junk piles. You know, where they're throwing their waste, the stuff that the culture isn't using. You know, their garbage dump. And the earliest signs of ragweed appearing in these kitchen middens and the junk piles of the Native Americans was over in the New England area about 12,000 years ago. They were using it as a food and layers form. You know, if, if someone's in an area for, for generations, they're all using the same junk pile, layers start to And so as they dug down at the base, the ragweed seeds were small, tiny, normal sized ragweed seeds. But over you know, several thousand years, the seeds got bigger and bigger and bigger through selective breeding. The Native Americans realized, hey, this is a good plant. There's a lot of food value in this. And if we collect the bigger seeds and plant those, the next crop, those seeds are bigger too. So through selectively breeding the ragweed, they got the seeds almost to the size of popcorn, loaded with oil. It became a trade good. It ended up spreading all across North America in trade for things, Mexico all the way up to Alaska, and was cultivated by the, they had big fields of it planted around their, their villages and so forth. Those Native Americans that did uh, agriculture, uh, here in Texas it would be the Cato and the Waco were the only two Native American tribes that actually actively did uh, agriculture. So it became a food good, became a trade good, up until about 1400 years ago. So only 1400 years ago it just disappeared from their diet stop being used. 1400 years ago is when corn showed up from South America. And as good as ragweed was, corn was even better. Because one of the big things about the corn is it didn't cause the allergies that the ragweed was causing. Because <laughs> the ragweed, it's a wind pollinated plant, you know, pumping its pollen into the air, breathing it, you get irritated, you get an allergic reaction. Corn doesn't have that same sort of a Corn is still wind pollinated, but for some reason we're not allergic to it quite the way a lot of people are for ragweed. So 1400 years ago, corn arrived and ragweed stopped being a food because it stopped being selectively bred for the big kernels. The kernels shrunk back down to their original size. But even nowadays, you can collect those kernels and the, and the ragweed, uh, roast them, and just eat them like unpopped popcorn. Or usually what the Native Americans would do is they would crush them and then put them in boiling water or at least really hot water. The oil would come out, you know, it lowers the viscosity of the oil so it's easier to come out of the plant, floats to the top of the, the water, let the water cool, skim off, and now you have oil that you can use as a cooking oil for frying things or lubricating things, the waterproof leather, you know, all sorts of different useful leather, uh, oil. Makes a good lamp oil, they use it for lamp oil. Uh, but where would you find a seed? So no one really sells ragweed seeds, <laughs> believe it or not. So you gotta find. So yeah, you want to find. And actually, this had been mowed, but this time of year, the fall. So the October to November transition, uh, pretty much south of the Red River, is when you would look for the seeds. Um, warning: it, it can cause allergies. But the seeds themselves, they're, they're a good oil source, a good source of calories. And but I mean, on, on the plant themselves. Oh, so, sorry. Uh, so at the end, this one here for a second. 
So, I thought it had it there. No. Okay, so at the end of the branch, there'll be a little stop about an inch and a half to two inches long. Again, looks like a little ear of corn. And the seeds will be on those ears, but they're going to be small. Bigger than poppy seeds, about the size of mustard. So you make corn beef, uh, and beef and mustard seeds in the perfect size. <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, if uh, if you see some more, take it and smell the, the leaves because it really has a, a good smell. You can make a tea from the leaves, but there's something about the drying and the hot water changes the flavor some. So it's kind of like coffee. Uh, until you're addicted to it, it smells better than it tastes. Uh, same thing with the ragweed tea. So. Okay. Uh, where are you?